please turn off all cell phones and electronic devices and rise for a moment of silence and pledge. Thank 
also recognize that Suzanne Summers has uh, she has served the county uh, with honor and dignity as well. Uh, she worked for Mary McBellis, the county executive's office, and uh, she handled constituent services and issues like no one else. So I really want to thank Suzanne because uh, I worked with her and it's been a pleasure working with her and she truly is irreplaceable. Thank you.
Don is joined by her husband, Ken, who just retired. He's kind of looking for his wife to stay home a little more. But she's lucky enough to stay with us, and we appreciate you lending her. So Donna, could you please come up? So Donna Brown started her career 25 years ago here at the county, and she worked her way up to the highest rank, which is chief clerk at the county clerk's office. And truthfully, Donna, I don't think there's a day that goes by not to see your smiling face being so serious but pleasant to everyone and professional. And the county is so very fortunate to have you and myself, you being chief clerk, I couldn't be happier. Thank you, Donna, for all your hard work. Also, has a beautiful story. She lives here in Port Service, raised a family here. She has two sons, a husband, and Karen has been at the county for over 30 years. Now, 30 years, get that. 30 years working for the county. Let me tell you, that's something impressive. Karen started off as a part time worker and worked her way up the ranks, and now she's the director to the PMV, and that will be the new home here that Karen will oversee. And Karen, it's a pleasure to work with you. I know you come from a long family of serving the public. You get it. You understand it. There's not a day that goes by that I don't see you and really feel how lucky we are to have you in our lives and work here. And just to see that smile on face when people come to the DMV, we're very lucky to have you. So thank you, Karen, for all your work. Thank you, Karen. And Legislator Tom Fagione represents Karen in her district, and Legislator Mike Mangasakis represents Tom in her district. Thank you so much. Now, your father was Jim Garvey, right? I remember him. He was sheriff before Frank Taylor. He was a really young, very good sheriff. Good family. Thank you. Okay, next up, I would like to invite um, Logan Eisenberg and his family, Operation Sox. Um, I know Carl Bonnet is here from the Village of Montgomery as well, and Legislator Rob Sassy to do the presentation along with uh, Minority Leader Mike Perdue and Joel Sierra. Talking, and long story short, Logan began a campaign 
to raise, uh, to get donations for socks for the homeless. And Pro Bonnet with Montgomery, a Rotarian, very astutely picked up on it. Hey, listen, let's, as Rotarians, help out Logan raise socks. And Logan's original goal was 1,000, right, Logan? 3,000. No, it was one, I think your goal was 1,000, but you raised almost 4,000 pairs of socks, correct? Okay. So Logan, 11 years old, resident of Middletown, noticed something. And I think that whether you're a Democrat or Republican, for whatever reason you're here today, we hear so many negative things. And we see so many negative people, so many negative things in the news. That as an educator, 32 years, I grew up at Valley Central, I always cherish the moments that my students did great things. And Logan, you did a great thing. You're a future leader. I can see that. And I hope that you take that idea, you take that mentality with you for years to come. You did a great thing, and we're very proud of you. We have a presentation here. Your uh, legislator, Mr. Sierra, is here to present a few things for you. And Chairman Gretchen. Uh, Logan, yes, but just like uh, Legislator Sassy said, it was uh, his idea he brought it to my attention. I saw an article in the newspaper. It was a great thing. It brings me great joy to see uh, someone of your age set an example, not just for kids your age, but for humanity as a whole. Um, you hear all, all the negative things happening in today's society, and uh, it just brings me great joy to give you this certificate of recognition from the city of Middletown, the mayor of the city of Middletown, and the common council wanted to present you with a certificate of recognition for all your hard work and dedication you did. You set a great example for kids your age, and I'm hoping that the TV screen you know, sort of highlights you a little bit. Um, helping the homeless is, is something everybody should be doing. I know it's hard, and but you taking that initiative and, and working that hard to get 4,000, you sure it was 4,000? Was it right on the money? Well, that's just as good. So what I'm just like to tell you that keep up the good work. Tell all your friends about maybe get them involved too, and maybe you can do some more stuff. This is great. Um, so I'm going to present you with a distinguished service award from the County of Orange, uh, presented to Logan Eisenberg for Operation Sox for outstanding community service and dedicated individual efforts given this day in March to to state. And on behalf of the whole legislature, you really raised the bar very high. It's truly a benevolent deed, and uh, it's something that we can all look up to. And I can see that look on your face, you're very proud of what you did. We're very proud of what you did. And everybody else is thank you. Congratulations. Oh, I thank, yes, Rotary. I used to be a Rotarian many years ago. Motto for Rotary is service above self, and you certainly epitomize that only too well. Carl, did you want to say a few words? Just Carl was uh, involved with the Rotary end. I just wanted to say congratulations, and I know uh, Logan's already got his next project in the works. In, in a couple of weeks, he's going to work on a towel project, right? So he's already thinking about the next thing he can do to help the community. So awesome job. High five. Great job. Finally, I'd like to invite up Jacob Sanchez from the village of Montgomery and his mother, and a chair officer, Jack Smith, who's still here. Um, a short time ago, I saw an article in the Times Hill Record, and, and Jacob only lived a block and a half from here, and I didn't even know it. But, uh, um, he was in the finals of the, what was it, the junior? Junior? 
You been out? Yeah, you have so many accomplishments. He's, he's hated ice time in, in Michael Magnus district, and these are just a few of the things that he's done uh, in career highlights. Second place in the 2018 U.S. Figure Skating Championship in San Jose, California. That was the highlight so far, right? If you have any more medals and anything to come, don't I don't want the pressure on you. <laughs> Third place Eastern Sectional Final, first place North Atlantic Regional, first place Mid Atlantic Figure Skating Championships, third place Grand Memorial Championships in Hackensack, New Jersey, first place Morris Open, Morristown, New Jersey, second place Southern Connecticut Open, Darren, Connecticut, first place Empire State Winter Games, sixth place North, North Atlantic Regional Figure Skating Championships in Williamsville, um, fifth, fifth grade student in McCormick Elementary School, we know that, and Officer Smith's chair program, which is he's, he's a rock star in McCormick Elementary School, isn't he? Everybody loves him. I get the, I get the golf clap when I'm around. <laughs> Personal uh, information awards, North Atlantic Regional Championship Trophy, Juvenile Boys, 2017, Dan Gurley Juvenile Award, Dorothy Hamill Cup, 2017, State of New York Legislative Resolution by Senator Bill Larkin, training at ice time, as he said, Western National Team, 2013 to present. Lake Placid Summer Figure Skating Camp and the list goes on. And just so many accolades, and I'm very proud of you as mayor to go to the company as well. Um, just keep up with the work. I mean, I don't want to put pressure on you, but I want to be able to say in 2026 that I went to the same elementary school with that uh, Olympic champion. All right? Little shy, you want to say anything? Smitty, you want to say anything? Or no, just say a couple words. Good afternoon, everybody. Yeah, Jacob is one of my uh, one of my uh, boys in, the, in my fifth grade there class. Uh, he's the rock star in uh, Montgomery Elementary. Uh, the kids all know him. They know what they do, what he does. Uh, when there's rainy days and they can't go out for uh, recess, they watch his videos, and the kids are amazed. When again, every night he goes home for three hours and he uh, has to practice besides doing his homework. These two young lads that you just saw up here just goes to show you what, what our future looks like. I think our future looks very bright. And this boy's going to go far. With that, everybody have a nice day. Jacob, wait a minute. I, I have your certificate, Jacob. Just give me one second. I, and I'd also like to thank Mrs. Sanchez and Mr. Sanchez, because I just can't imagine the amount of effort that you guys, you two put into, and your family as well, put into uh, this young man's effort. And it costs money too, you know that. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Taxes aren't going down either, right? <laughs> but congratulations. Well, let me read your certificate real quick. It says, Distinguished Service Award of the County of Orange presented to Jacob Sanchez, 2018 Presidential U.S. Peter Skating Championship, Juvenile Boys Category, Silver Medal, given the first day of March, 2018. All human trust and all the legislators named him. And I said we should have the video here. Next time we, we have something, we'll try to do that. So a little bit of the, the sample of the wares. Um, public participation, before I call out the first public speaker, I would like to say that the uh, pay-to-play resolution to uh, repeal or revise the pay-to-play law has been withdrawn with no intent to go back to committee. So I know some of you, you're still allowed to speak on that item, but it, it is going to be withdrawn. So you're not going to be voting on that today. Okay, with that said, uh, The first speaker is Sandra Kassam, out of Newburgh on pay to play. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Kelly's going to turn that around for you, Sandra.
Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I have all these coaches. Thank you very much. You've been at the podium many times. You know what you're saying. Um, I want to thank you for the opportunity to speak. And um, in view of the fact that this, this local law has been withdrawn from the agenda, I want to congratulate and commend you for doing this. Uh, I think that it is to the credit of the entire legislature that whatever was done to pull this has accomplished its goal. And I certainly hope it never does come up again. And uh, I think that the presence of the public here today would indicate to all of you how important this is. Um, however, it's a very interesting learning experience for me because I thought before I educated myself a little bit, I thought that the uh, law on the books, which is still on the books, was, um, was, was more restrictive than the state, uh, the state law regarding contributions, and then discovered to my amazement that the state law regarding contributions is indeed much more lax. And frankly, I was shocked because the amount of money that can be given to a candidate really, really uh, suggests that it's nothing more than legal, legal, um, uh, excuse me, uh, uh, legal corruption, if I may say so. And uh, so I'm very pleased that you have done this, and I commend all of you. And that's all I have to say. Thank you. Next speaker is Mary Ann McDonald, the flight. Uh, first of all, I'd like to make a disclaimer that Barry Lewis and I did not consult on my speech, although he wrote to the paper on Sunday because I wrote my speech before that. Uh, the subject of my speech is retaining strength in the 2013 Orange County Payroll Law. And uh, as I said, I wrote this before you withdrew it, so it's going to come across as harshly as I intended before you withdraw. What a lame excuse. Wow, Steve Newhouse and his attorney, Langton Chapman, had to dig really deep to pull this thing out. And you ask, what is the excuse this time for the ripoff of the Orange County taxpayer? The excuse is a never challenged Orange County law passed in 2013 by a 20 to 1 margin right before the November 2013 election. Now, four plus years, some years later, some officials have worried that limiting campaign contributions by entities who are seeking or have a contract with the county is unconstitutional. A clause that is written into that Orange County pay to pay law states the reason for the law is to try to get rid of the actual or perceived corruption in the awarding of Orange County contracts. That is a good thing. It seems now, however, in 2018, with the 2017 elections in our rear view mirror, and the safety of each of you 21 elected legislators will enjoy for the next four years, I guess you think the timing is good to undo the 2013 law. You're either banking on the fact that by 2021 voters will forget what you did, or that Orange County voters are too stupid to understand by eliminating this law, the stage is set for the Orange County Executive and any other county official who signs contracts to possibly award lucrative county contracts to companies or individuals who pay the price, price in campaign donations. The Orange County pay to play law should be strengthened by eliminating the LLC loophole not by eliminating a law that has never been challenged as unconstitutional. All we have is the legal opinion of Steve Newhouse's attorney. To be declared unconstitutional would require a legal challenge and a decision by a judge. This has never happened in four plus years that the law has been on the books. Who stands to benefit or gain from the elimination of the 2013 pay to play law? Steve Newhouse will gain. Maybe some of his high-end campaign donors will also get more lucrative contests. I say it again, isn't it interesting the unconstitutionality argument did not surface until after the 2017 elections? Why will Steve Newhouse need more larger campaign contributions than the current law and the LLC loophole provides? Word on the street, Steve is looking for a gubernatorial run in 2022. Is that a legitimate reason to shaft the Orange County taxpayers and once again cast a dark cloud of suspicion over actual or perceived corruption? Campaign donors should not be rewarded with contracts with our tax dollars. It should never happen that public money is used for personal gain. This is totally unacceptable. 
is Legislator Agastakis and some of his fellow legislators the only ones who stand for honesty, integrity, and transparency in government, the values of the people? Do the rest of you work for your constituents, or instead do you work for Steve Newhouse and Langdon Chapman? How you vote today will give the voters the answer. Uh, and I quoted from a 2000, uh, February 16th, 18th Times Herald Record article. It's a moment of truth for the Republicans who hold 15 of the 21 legislative seats. Will it be principle or power? Thank you. The next speaker is Randolph, the House Visit, State Hill, CPV, and Pay to Play. It looks like power. Thank you very much for allowing me the opportunity to speak. Uh, I'm, I'm delighted that this was taken off the agenda, the pay to play. But the CPD scandal being played out in federal court should be a wake up call for all of us about pay to play. In Tuesday's Times Herald Record, Chris McKenna clearly reported on the options that Home Rule provides. Hats off to the town of Green, Greenberg Supervisor Paul Piner for limiting campaign contributions to ordinary citizens and for upholding the principles of honesty, integrity, and fair play, all of which are essential to preserve what is left of democracy in America. I also applaud Austin County Executive Mike Hine for his proposal for campaign finance reforms, especially for the option of public financing for candidates. We all know where Langley Chapman is coming from, and Chris made that clear in the article. He argues for, argues for repeal of the pay-to-pay -pay law to please his boss. His viewpoints belie his arrogance and willingness to compromise our government and the politicians who were elected to serve the people of this county. But why would Steve Newhouse push for the repeal of the $4,000 limit? Is he really that insecure? Is this what we are to expect from the Republican majority? Why is it that you aren't taking the higher ground to cut the limit to zero and provide for public financing of elections? If this legislation puts the, the repeal of the pay to law back on the agenda, instead of strengthening it, you will further shame us all for electing minions who march in lockstep to further your own political careers. Do you really want to emulate Andrew Cuomo's senior advisor, Joe Perfecto, now awaiting a verdict on charges of bribery and corruption? Make us proud instead. Take the higher ground. Lorraine McNeil, uh, for the part. Good afternoon. I want to thank you very much for calling the amendment to pay the play law. And I understand it's without any reintroduction or going back to the committee. If it does do so, then you get a chance to come and prepare comments. But now I'm just going to say thank you. Thank you. Mary Lou Dietrich, NRA, and State of Play. Hi, Mary Lou Dietrich, Bill Town, New York. I'd like to briefly address three agenda items and remind you that when you were elected, you all agreed to represent the people of Orange County. Uh, one, very glad to see local law interest. Number one at 2018 off the table. Remember, the residents of Orange County get absolutely no benefit if you had changed that law. The logic that it could be challenged as unconstitutional is weak. Since when has the county been so concerned about what might happen? We, the people, demand transparency in our representatives and do not want corporations mandating legislation. Remember, you are elected to represent we, the people. Two, I urge you to vote yes on item number 16, the bond resolution for the expansion of the Heritage Trail. It would be a great health benefit for the people of Middletown and all who use the trail. We people. And third, this is just my thought, regarding resolution 21, taking into account the latest horror that occurred in our schools, wouldn't it be better to follow the examples of Delta, Enterprise, Dix, and even Walmart, and not accept $3,652.50 from the NRA. Our leaders must make it clear that they will not be influenced by the NRA, and that due to NRA influence, the lives of our children are at risk. 
Thank you very much. Next speaker, Christine Neely. Very long. Good afternoon. Thank you for letting me address you this evening and this afternoon. Uh, I'm thrilled that you decided to repeal uh, your consideration of this law. It seems that the laws uh, are here to protect us and to be fair and equitable to everybody and not to promote a pay to play. I, went, I haven't had a tremendous amount of time to research this, but I look at the list of donors and I'm, I'm very, very, very concerned. I have to worry about the culture that exists in Orange County. Before I moved up here almost 20 years ago, I was warned. And, you know, I, I was <laughs> warned by people that lived up here and they said, well, this is a very corrupt county. I don't necessarily agree with that, but I do worry about the appearances of some of the decisions that are, are coming down. I worry about the amount of money being given um, because your brother does it, your sister does it, your child does it, your LLCs do it. It just gives a bad appearance. Whether it's, it's dishonest or not is not for me to decide, it's not for me to even discuss. Um, I expect uh, if you do ever come up with a law, it should be fair and equitable. I would love to see a common pool. Um, Political contributions are a really, really complex uh, subject. There's a lot of nooks and crannies. There's a lot of advice that should be sought before any decision is made. There are a lot of people that should be open comments, there should be written comments. The same almost as the secret process. Um, I look at the, um, I wonder here if Anti Alibi and the Times Herald Record hadn't written those articles, uh, would this have been withdrawn? And I like to think that. You really thought about it, you gave it serious consideration, and thank you for this kindness. Next speaker, Vincent Brad Bradbury, regarding Pitt Good afternoon, um, When I first started my working career out of college, I lived over near Ellenville, just about all the little worst things over the mountains at Pine Bush, where I taught school for a few years. There was an old mechanic who had a shop right at the base of the mountain in Ellenville called him Ernie Morrow. I don't know if you remain on it. I don't know if you had a, it was a, it was a pleasure to deal with, and I really valued the contact that I had with him. He would fix my windshield records and stuff and say, yeah, he's not on it. Anyway, he, he told me, he said, if it ain't broke, you don't fix it. And that's kind of what I had in the back of my mind when I came here to talk about the pay to play law. And I'm very happy. I'm not sure if I understand that this is take them off the agenda just for today and make them up again, or it's a dead issue. I, I hope it's a dead issue because we, I don't think we really, we really should even be having this vote. The law was instituted for a good reason. It got, I think it was either 15 or 20 to 1 support when it was first. And that, that's a progressive thing to do in, in, uh, in, this, in your business, in the law business, in the legislative business. It's worked very well without any negative comment. Um, revealing the law appears to be a power play by the majority party to give them a financial edge and smacks of putting party politics to put interest of the county residents. And remember, you are public servants. That's what you're supposed to be doing in the interest of your constituents to be your top priority. Thank you for taking that out of consideration. Thank you, Vince. Good to see you again. Vince and I used to work at Rally Lumber together many years. Okay, next speaker, St Stephen. It's very small. Madonna, is it? Okay, I got it right regarding NRA. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you're doing well today. I'm here to speak to you today in light of the recent tragedy in Florida. My thoughts and prayers are with the families, but it also got me thinking to what could have been done. What measures could have been taken to prevent that? Who is to say that doesn't happen to one of the schools in Orange County? Schools range from 1,000 to 3,000 students. At the high school and middle school level, we should implement a similar system to that at FA, the high school down in Newbury. As metal detectors and a procedure requiring kids to go through uh, different metal detectors in the morning, a local uh, police officer, in case anything out of ordinary happens, and an unarmed security force that's very relatable to the students. As long as there are 
assault rifles, which can be found in five to eight million American homes, we must act. The NRA will continue to pursue their own individual business interests, which includes a possible donation of 4,000 to the Sheriff's Department. I don't know if you guys have children, but as our elected officials, you have chosen to protect the interests of the people, and that's a pretty big family. Preemptive measures are more important than reactionary measures. Prevent disasters from ensuing. Thank you for your time, and God bless. Thank you. Next speaker, Virginia Scott, regarding campaign finance. Well, thank you very much for taking this off the table. Um, I did come on Valentine's Day and I came to the committee meeting. Unbeknownst to me, there was a moment of silence. I came from my job as a teacher. I had no idea what had happened. And as far as the pay to play, I really feel that we should look at some tougher numbers. 25% of the salary that a legislator or the county executive made. That's the most they can make. We don't need this money. We're here to serve our county uh, residents. We don't need it of $100,000 in someone's campaign account. I also urge you to turn back the money from the NRA. I understand that this money is going to be used for ammunition. I understand that it would way would help the sheriff's department. And I am shaking. As a human being who has been counseling children, worrying about being safe, and hearing this group talk about keeping these assault, I know they're not assault rifles, but keeping rifles that our military and our law enforcement should have, no one else. They are perpetuating the murder of our children. And today, you see two outstanding children that are doing the right thing. And lastly, Legislator Anastasis, I want to thank you. You had courage to speak up even when the, during the uh, community meeting. You showed courage even when they were telling you to tone it down. I want my legislators to be more passionate and to represent the people that you're here to serve. Thank you so much. So this was on to the end of the agenda, but it should be on the, it's an agenda item. Alicia Weissman regarding school security. I assume that's related to the NRA. Uh, hi, thanks for this time. Um, uh, just uh, one note, I did want to say thank you for drawing the, uh, the pay to play thing from the agenda, and I hope that is totally dead. Um, but I mostly want to talk about school security. Uh, there's a lot of talk about having armed guards in schools. Or even army teachers, um, but focusing on guns alone as a means of defense isn't really helpful, I don't think. Um, one thing, it will take uh, too long. Um, there's so many guns around, it's going to take years and years for that to change. Um, at Park Bay, there was an armed guard, and he did not. Also, if you're putting guns into the schools, you know some kids are going to try to grab either as a prank or out of anger, or a gun's going to get left in the bathroom, or any of the other dozens of ways that guns can fall into the wrong little hands. Instead, uh, we should be looking at the security precautions that we use in the schools and comparing them to what we use in other facilities. Um, the officers downstairs aren't just hanging out in the hallways waiting for someone to start shooting. There's a metal detector. Airports are also protected by metal detectors. Uh, workplaces have badged entry systems. Stores have security cameras. So I was glad to hear about the initiative to install security cameras in schools. Um, I think that's a very good idea. But um, according to the newspaper, it seems to be dependent on which schools are interested. Well, I don't think we should be relying on schools to be interested in uh, enacting greater safety measures. And I don't think they should be, have to be responsible to figure this out on their own. When we had a problem with uh, airport security, uh, the country got together and uh, developed the Transportation Security Administration. I think they've done a much better job than the individual airport uh, in a similar way, I think that we need a common process to assess the needs of each school and make comprehensive recommendations. Um, there should also be money available from the legislature or the state to help schools um, initiate whatever measures are needed. Um, so I think that we all do, as a, as a community, as a county, and as a state, take a, a look at all
all of our schools together and share them. Okay, Majority Leader Pennelly. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move that the minutes of November 7, 2017. All in favor? Uh, Legislator Fagione? Yes. Mr. Chairman, I request that item number three on the agenda, local law, introductory number one of 2018, a local law amending local law number 13 of 2013 as previously amended, now to be known as the Pay to Play Disclosure Law, be withdrawn. Second. Okay, if there are no objection, objections, that will be done. Okay, Legislator Fagione? Thank you, Chairman. I request that item number eight on the agenda, bond resolution authorizing engineering and installation of a carbon filtration system at the water plant at the Ballard View Center, stating the estimated maximum cost thereof is $38,000, appropriating said amount therefore, and authorizing the issuance of $38,000 of bonds of the county to finance said appropriation be withdrawn. Okay, second. Okay, there are no objections. Okay. So we're planning, we're not striking it all together, we're planning to fund it with cash. That's the intent. Okay. And then item number nine on the agenda. Bond resolution authorizing the upgrading of the nursing call bell system at the Valley View Center, stating the estimated maximum cost thereof is $300,000 appropriating said amount, therefore, and authorizing the issuance of $300,000 bonds of the county to finance said appropriation be withdrawn. Second. Okay, if there are no objections, that'll be done as well. Same and, reason. And that item number 10 on the agenda. Bond resolution authorizing the roof replacement of the salt barn at the Valley View Center, stating the estimated maximum cost thereof is $28,000, appropriating said amount therefore, and authorizing the issuance of $28,000 bonds of the county to finance said appropriation be withdrawn. Second. No objections? So be it. Okay. Yes, we have three consent. Yes, Mr. O'Donnell, again, I'm sorry. Request for consent resolution. I request consent to place on the agenda. Resolution of the Orange County Legislature urging the Governor of the State of New York and the New York State Department of Education to release funds to Orange County School Districts under the Smart School Bond Act. I'd like to second that, Chairman. Okay. If there are no objections, that'll be number 27. Okay, we have to do anything else before we go to agenda item number one? Good. Okay. Agenda item number one, we actually did already. I'm sorry. Okay, you're going to read it. Okay, yes, read it and we'll vote on it. I'm sorry. Chairman Gresh, resolution of the legislature of the County of Orange honoring the memory of Martin M. Sanders, Jr., outstanding citizen, dedicated public servant, and former county legislator for the 5th Legislative District. Second. Discussion? Roll call. Spinelli? Aye. Padu? Aye. Amo? Anagnostakis, Benton, Cheney, Fagione, Hines, Corsak, Wuhan, Minuta, O'Donnell, Miscavige, Sassi, Sierra, Ganga, Sutherland, Quartel, Tui, Giro, Fresh, 21 eyes. I would ask that every legislator go on that with me. That's okay? Thank you very much. Number two. Legislators Duke and Hines, resolution confirming the reappointments by the county executive to the Orange County Board of Ethics pursuant to local law 2 of 1994. Second. Discussion? Roll call. Anelli? Yes. Padu? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Cheney? Fagione? Hines? Pulisek? Wuhan? Menuda? O'Donnell? Miscavige? Sassi? Sierra? Deganga, Sutherland, Cartel, Tui, Bureau, Resch, 21 eyes. 
Okay, 3A, receive and file. 3, withdrawn. 4A, receive and file. Uh, number 4, local law. Legislators Amo, Fagione, and Sassy. Local law introductory number 2 of 2018. A local law amending local law number 8 of 1968, known as the Orange County Charter, and local law number 10 of 1969, known as the Orange County Administrative Code, as previously amended providing for the compensation of members of the legislature serving as officers or in a special capacity. Sorry. Discussion? Roll call. Spinelli? Yes. Padu? No. Amo? Yes. Nagostakis? Benton? Cheney? Fagione? Hines? Kolosek? No. Luhan? No. Menuda? O'Donnell? Ruskevich, Sassy, Sierra, Taganga, Sutherland, Twatel, Tui, Giro, Gresham. 16 ayes, 5 noes. Okay, number 5. Legislators O'Donnell and Twatel, resolution authorizing the county executive in conjunction with the Orange County Department of Health to accept and appropriate funds from the New York State Department of Health pursuant to Section 99-H of the General Municipal Law and Section 4.09 of the Orange County Charter. Discussion? Roll call. Benelli? Yes. Padu? Yes. Amo? Yes. Nagastakis? Benton? Cheney? Fagione? Hines? Pulisek? Luhan? Yes. Benuda? O'Donnell? Griskevich? Sassy? Sierra? Saganga, Sutherland, Tortel, Tui, Giro, Russia. 21 eyes. Okay, number six. Legislators O'Donnell and Tortel. Resolution authorizing the county executive in conjunction with the Orange County Department of Mental Health to accept and appropriate funds from the New York State Office of Alcoholism and Substance Abuse Services, pursuant to Section 99-H of the General Municipal Law and Section 4.09 of the Orange County Charter. Right. Discussion? Yes. Fulisek added, Mike Kaduk added, Kevin Darian added, Joe Menuda added. Okay, Joe? What's your deep in thought? Full sick? Everybody else was there. Sullivan? Sullivan, I'm sorry. Sullivan, Sullivan added. Okay. Anybody else? Yes. Kathy Stiganga? Bob Sassy? Peter? Peter? Three? Seriously, we left out. Okay, roll call. Pinelli? Yes. Padu? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Cheney? Fagione? Hines? Pulisek? Luhan? Yes. Menuda? O'Donnell? Piscevich? Sassy? Sierra? Saganga? Sutherland? Tortel? Tui? Biro? Gresham? 21 eyes. Okay, number seven. Legislators O'Donnell and Tortel. Resolution authorizing the county executive in conjunction with the Orange County Department of Mental Health to accept and appropriate funds from the New York State Office of Mental Health pursuant to Section 99-H of the General Municipal Law and Section 4.09 of the Orange County Charter. Discussion? What's there, Emma? Yeah. Pulisic added. Uh, Lujan added. Sassy added. Sutherland added. Okay. Go for Benelli? Yes. Paduke? Yes. Amo? Anagnostakis, Benton, Cheney, Fagione, Hines, Pulisek, Luhan, Menuda, O'Donnell, Ruskevich, Sassy, Sierra, Saganga, Sutherland, Hotel, Tui, Piero, Fresh. 21 eyes. Okay, number eight. Is this a bond resolution or not? Is it? It's wrong. It's wrong. It's wrong. It's wrong. I'm sorry. I didn't have it checked off. Sorry. Okay, 11. Legislator Benton and O'Donnell, resolution making a supplemental appropriation to the 2018 county budget for the Valley View Center for Nursing Care and Rehabilitation, pursuant to section 4.09 of the Orange County Charter. Second. Discussion? Roll call. Benelli? Yes. Padu? Yes. Amo? Yes. Nagdastakis? Benton? Cheney? Fagione? Hines? Fulisek? Luhan? Yes. Benuda? O'Donnell? Ruskevich? Sassy? Sierra? Saganga, Sutherland, Quartel, Tui, Bureau, Congress, 21 eyes. And number 12. 
Legislators Benton, Sutherland, and Hines. Resolution making a supplemental appropriation to the 2018 county budget for the Valley View Center for Nursing Care and Rehabilitation pursuant to section 4.09 of the Orange County Charter. Second. Discussion? No problem. Annelli? Yes. Did you? Yes. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Kevin wants, Kevin Darien wants to be added. Amos? Yes. Benton? Cheney? Fagione? Hines? Pulisette? Luhan, Menuda, O'Donnell, Riskevich, Sassi, Sierra, Staganga, Sutherland, Hotel, Chewy, Hero, Gresham. 21 eyes. Okay, number 13. Legislators Benton and O'Donnell. Resolution making a supplemental appropriation to the 2018 county budget for the Valley View Center for Nursing Care and Rehabilitation pursuant to section 4.09 of the Orange County Charter. Second. Discussion? No call. Annelli? Yes. Adieu? Yes. Emo? Yes. Nagastakis? Benton? Cheney? Fagione? Hines? Pulisek? Yes. Luhan? Menuda? O'Donnell? Riskevich? Sassi? Sierra? Staganga? Sutherland? Hotel? Tui? Hero? Gretchen? 21 eyes. Number 14. Legislators Benton and Sutherland. Resolution approving the release of the county's interest in and to a certain deed sale parcel the previous owner of record pursuant to section 5 paragraph b1 of local law number 2 of 2010. Second. Discussion? Both Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Cheney? Fagione? Hines? Pulisek? Luhan? Menuda? O'Donnell? Eskevich? Sassi? Sierra? Staganga? Sutherland? Hotel? Tui? Bureau? Gresham? 21 eyes. Okay, number 15. Legislators Benton and Anagnostakis. Resolution authorizing the private sale and conveyance of certain county owned lands acquired by reason of a failure to redeem said lands from a tax sale to Orange County pursuant to section 10184 of the Real Property Tax Law and Orange County amended local law number two of 2010. Discussion? Roll call. Benelli? Yes. Padu? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Cheney? Fagione? Hines? Pulisek, Luhan, Renuda, O'Donnell, Eskevich, Sassi, Sierra, Staganga, Sutherland, Cartel, Tui, Hero, Gresham. 21 eyes. I forgot to mention earlier, Sheriff Carl Du Bois is with us today, as well as Deputy County Executive Wayne Booth and Supervisor Town Crawford, Charlie Carnes. Okay, number 16, bond resolution requiring two thirds vote. Legislators Padu, Benelli, and Benton. Bond resolution dated March 1st, 2018. Bond resolution of the County of Orange, New York, authorizing the construction of improvements to the City of Middletown owned railroad bed for the expansion of the Heritage Trail from East Main Street in the City of Middletown to Ingracia Road in the Town of Watco, subject to an easement in favor of the County by the City of Middletown for public access over such property, stating the estimated maximum cost thereof is $2,200,000. Appropriating said amount, therefore, and authorizing the issuance of 2,200,000 bonds with the county to finance said appropriation. Discussion? Yes, Legislator Sierra. Oh, you want to be added? I'm sorry. Okay. Anybody else? Okay. Discussion for Barry. Peter, you want to be added? Kathy added? Kevin Darian added? Lori Cattell added? Tom Sassy added? Anna Sutherland added? Tom Pagione added, of course. And discussion? Thank you, Chairman. Let me start with some background. Segment 3 of the Heritage Trail was planned to receive significant, a significant percentage of its funding from a federal transportation grant through the Orange County Transportation Council. The City of Port Jervis has a bridge and road project that needed about $6.8 million of additional federal funding, and that project is ready to go to bid this spring. The only way to get that funding is to delay other projects. The Village of Curious Joel offered one of its funded projects and the county executive agreed to allocate the $2.7 million for the construction phase of the Heritage Trail Segment 3 to the Port Jervis project, bringing the total cost close to the amount needed. The Orange County Transportation Council at its meeting last Friday approved these changes. I support and thank both the Village of Curious Joel and the county for agreeing to allow the change because the Port Jervis project is critical to the traveling safety of residents and visitors. However, the resolution before us today 
is unnecessary and inappropriate at this time. By passing this resolution, we, the legislature, are ceding control over our involvement in the construction component of the county's Segment 3 project and allowing it to move forward with or without federal money. In the future, arguments could be made that since the legislature has fully funded the project, the federal allocation should be given to another project, and this could be done without our involvement. In the future, when the time comes to fund the project, I am sure the legislature will continue its support of the trail. And in looking back uh, over the last few years, the Heritage Trail resolutions by this body have received unanimous support, not a vote against any of those resolutions. My no, my no vote today is not to be construed as a lack of support for the Heritage Trail, but as a concern for this legislature abdicating its funding responsibility for the project. I will continue to actively support completing the work at hand and finding ways to expand and improve the Heritage Trail and trails throughout the county. Thank you, Chairman. Hey, Legislator Cagione. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, thank you, Mr. Cheney, for the, uh, <clears throat> the background on that. I just asked for support this afternoon on this resolution. This resolution does two very simple things. Number one, this is a way our legislative body can commit to saying that we will always support the Heritage Trail. We have always been proud to support the Heritage Trail in all its many developments. And this is a commitment to say that as it continues to progress westerly into Orange County, that we will be committed to making that a reality. The Heritage Trail impacts positively in many different legislative districts, many different towns, and also now into the city of Middletown. This commitment today shows proof that we as a legislative body can reach across the aisle and say, you know what, this is a good thing for all of our communities, number one. Number two, this commitment today is also a commitment to the Orange County Transportation Council in the fact that they came to the table on Friday. I sat in the meeting and it was, a, it was an interesting thing. Orange County, County Transportation Council uh, agreed that they would make sure that the funding of a bridge in Port Jervis, a vital lifeline into the city of Port Jervis, that the funds will be made available. At no point was the discussion that, well, other projects will fail or other projects won't be done. The commitment by the Transportation Council on Friday was a commitment to seeing that the bridge project was done and in the future other projects will be done as well. Nobody was coerced and at any, at any time was there any kind of opposition. I sat in that room and I was very proud to see people from different walks of life and different communities come together and say fixing and replacing the bridge in Port Jervis was of significant importance, more so than putting our sidewalk project or other projects to the forefront immediately. I ask that you consider these two as you make your vote here today. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Legislator, or Party Leader Amo. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, mean, I really began thinking that, and I've always supported the Heritage Trail as, as you always said, I continue to plan to do that forever. I think it's a great thing to start other part of the county, and I'm a user of it myself. Uh, Mayor, you know, Legislative Cheney made a really good point, and that is that are we really committing ourselves to fund this so that the federal government is always looking for ways to not fund things and keep money and they say, well, Orange County's going to fund it, we don't need to fund it, and we can put it off. That's an area I think is a dangerous area to go in. It may never happen, and I think if it were to happen, we would still fund it. We would come at that point. I know I would. In fact, this seems to suggest to me at least some level of distrust for this body. After all the years that we've supported the Dirty Trail, why would anybody think that we wouldn't do it next year, the year after, or three years from now? So I haven't heard thinking that through. This is Mr. Chin. That would be enough. I just have to say here. I agree with both legislators, Cheney and Amo. Uh, my past record, I've supported the Heritage Trail, and I, can, I will continue to do so. I just don't like this uh, situation where we're putting ourselves ahead of it and guaranteeing, almost guaranteeing, federal funding for Her Heritage Trail. Uh, it's an Orange County project, and it goes through my community as well. I just don't like the process. I'll be there on this also. And do I, you know, I can understand where Legislator Vera, Legislator Amon, Legislator Sr. are coming from. We don't want to set a precedent, and I don't think we are because this is a 
county project. It's an area trail that we look close to many of our districts. Um, you know, and I, but I think I've been over that bridge in Port Jervis many times. It's in very bad shape. Um, I think in the spirit of cooperation, this is a, a signal that we're, we're working with them. Um, I know we work with Middletown many times, uh, the Indigo project and other projects, and I know the city of Middletown is very appreciative of what we do for them. And uh, I just hope we get that appreciation from the city of Port Jervis. Because I've seen some of the state of the county addresses over there, and they, they at least seem to indicate how little the county does for the city of Port Jervis. And I should certainly hope they appreciate what we're doing here. Um, the, you know, we have had unanimous votes on the Heritage Trail, but I can almost guarantee you, if it had not been for the million dollars that we got from the IDA a few years ago, I know I, would, I probably would have been a no vote. I know John Vero probably would have been a no vote at that time. But uh, it's a commitment that we really need to do. And, um, you know, and, and I don't think we're going to be bonding this in the future. It's just a commitment that we will if, if other things fail. So I encourage you to vote for this. Yes, I'm sorry. Thank you, Chair. Um, when this resolution first came to be, I was concerned that uh, <clears throat> this project would get delayed further in Middletown. I know it's been discussed for the last 20 plus years. And uh, speaking to the mayor in Middletown, uh, speaking to Legislative Fazio, understanding that they desperately need this bridge prepared in Port Jervis. Uh, talking to the mayor, Yes, the project in Milton is quite not, not ready. It's not ready for breaking ground, but this project in Port Jervis is much needed and it's ready to go. I understand that we're probably setting a bad precedent. But again, when I sat on the council in the city of Milton, there's many, many projects or, or grants that are funded by the federal government, but even the, the county starts projects in certain years. Funds it for a few years, it backs out of it, um, and it's their responsibility, responsibility to pick up that project or continue to fund that project or the situation that's happening in Newburgh with the firefighters. I mean, there's many projects that we can't foresee what's going to happen in the future. If these funds are ready and available now to help those people in Port Jervis and the community in Port Jervis, I approve, I have, I'd like to approve this project. I'm in support of this project. <clears throat> like I said, I know this has been discussed for probably 20 something years, and people in Milltown really want to see the, the trail go to Milltown. But um, I'm in favor of this project. Sure, you want to know? I just wanted to say that the actions that took place at the Transportation Council on our meeting on Friday was a great example of collaborating. project in Port Jervis is ready to go. The section three of the Heritage Trail is not ready to go. And it won't be for a while if we're just starting section two. So this resolution is a little bit more of an insurance policy and those are my words to the city of Middletown that we are committed to make the short of this particular thing that section goes. There is another round of funding Nor could the village of Curious Dwell use their money, and they graciously stepped aside as well. This is all of us working together to get the projects in all of Orange County done for the taxpayers here. So, I, if this is just a little bit of overkill and a little overreach to give the city of Middletown the assurances that they need, I am prepared to support. Thank you. That's a good point, um, Katie. I'm sorry. From you? Okay, sure. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just wanted to uh, really forward uh, the most economical construction project that we want to spend today. And with respect to delays in construction, delays in bridges, that just continues to drag those costs up. So it's incumbent on all of us in all the municipalities to have a steadfast timeline on these projects so that they don't go beyond all silver runs and so forth. Okay? That saves the taxpayer money. Thank you. That's another good point. And I just have to say, I, uh, 
wasn't pointing to Legislator Fagione when I said it's not appreciated in Fort Travis because he spreads the message over there only too well. And I went over that bridge with him for the Orange County Fireman's Parade and his chief, and I don't know what was scarier, that Army chief or that bridge. <laughs> You're a good driver, though, I'll give you that. Roll call. Oh. I'm so good with minority meetings. Thank you. I would agree with Katie and Joel and you, which uh, doesn't happen quite often. <laughs> uh, however, Nobody mentioned that there was extensive discussion between the county executive and the mayor of the city of Middletown, who actually graciously said that the fourth segment three of the Heritage Trail to downtown Middletown is not ready to be funded. He graciously acknowledged that supporting the, the renovation of the bridge in Fort Jervis is an important idea. And as a matter of fact, I got him to say that as the only voting member of the Transportation Council, the county executive, that next year he would be the vote that puts the funding back on the table for it. The, uh, the trail. So I'm going to support you. We agree quite a bit. Roll call. Anelli? Yes. Padu? Yes. Amo? No. Nagasakis? No. Benton? Yes. Cheney? No. Fagione? Yes. Hines? Yes. Pulisic? Yes. Luhan? Yes. Minuta? Yes. O'Donnell? Yes. Kraskevich? No. Sassy? Yes. Sierra? Deganga? Sutherland? Yes. Twatel? Aye. Tui? Yes. Bureau? No. Fresh? Yes. 16 ayes, 5 nerves. Motion passes. 17 of bond resolution as well. Legislators Tui, Benton, and Kulisek. Bond resolution dated March 1st, 2018. Bond resolution of the County of Orange, New York, authorizing construction of drainage improvements stating the estimated maximum cost thereof is $150,000, appropriating said amount therefore and authorizing the issuance of 150000 bonds of the county to finance said appropriation. Discussion? Yes. Lori Patel added? Okay, well, okay. Benelli? Yes. Padu? Yes. Amo? Yes. Magnuskakis? Benton? Cheney? Fagione? Hines? Pulisek? Luhan? Menuda? O'Donnell, Muscovich, Sassy, Sierra, Staganga, Sutherland, Hotel, Chewy, Bureau, Fresh, 21 eyes. Number 18. Legislators produce and tool set. Resolution authorizing the county executive to accept the proposed traffic signal easement in the town of Walker. Second. Discussion? Uh, if I don't add it, okay. roll call. Benelli? Yes. Paduke? Yes. Amo? Yes. Magnuskakis? Benton, Cheney, Bedgeon, Hines, Pulisek, Luhan, Menuda, O'Donnell, Eskevich, Sassy, Sierra, Staganga, Sutherland, Quartel, Tui, Hero, Fresh, 21 items. And number 19. Legislators Paduke and Pulisek. Resolution authorizing the county executive in conjunction with the Orange County Department of Public Works, Environmental Facilities and Services, to accept grant funds from Carton Council of North America, Inc., pursuant to Section 99-H of the General Municipal Law and Section 4.09 of the Orange County Charter. Second. Discussion? Uh, Jeannie added, Lujan added, uh, uh, Peter Cooley added, roll call, oh, and Joe Minuta added, roll call, and Lori Patel added, roll call. Benelli? Yes. Padu? Yes. Amo? Yes. Nagastakis? Benton, Cheney, Fagione, Hines, Pulisek, Luhan, Menuda, O'Donnell, Rescadish, Sassy, Sierra, Staganga, Sutherland, Quartel, Chewy, Hero, Gretchen, 21 eyes. Legislators Paduke, Hines, Menuda, and Fagione. Resolution of the Orange County Legislature urging the New York State Legislature and the Governor of the State of New York to enact legislation amending New York State General Municipal Law Section 72C to provide reciprocal reimbursement to county sheriffs by other municipal corporations for all reimbursable expenses relating to police training school or its members who have terminated employment and commenced employment with a municipal corporation. Discussion? Discussion. Majority Leader Benelli, then. Yes. Patel? Added? Discussion. Discussion. Okay. So Genga added? Bureau added, email added, um, Menuda added, Tui added, it's all discussion. Mr. 
Chair, I will be voting no on this legislation, uh, or resolution, excuse me, for two reasons. One, I propose a double taxation. I expressed this in committee. And two, I repeatedly asked, one of the strongest arguments in committee was that we pay other municipalities if it's if it reverses in order. And I've asked for that, how much we've paid and to what municipalities in the last five years. I have not been provided that information since the meeting asked it again when I saw the sheriff. So I don't feel that the people of the county should pay their county taxes to have the officer train and then pay their municipal taxes to have their to train that same officer. So I built a double taxation out of the office. Okay. Roll call. Benelli? Yes. Badu? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Cheney? Badgione? Hines? Pulisic? Lujan? No. Benuda, O'Donnell, Ruskevich, Sassy, Sierra, Stagenga, Sutherland, Hotel, no. Tui, Bureau, Gretchen. 19 ayes, 2 no. Okay, number 21. Legislative Stagione and Sierra. Resolution authorizing the county executive in conjunction with the Orange County Sheriff's Office to accept range ammunition from the NRA Foundation pursuant to section 99-8 of the general municipal law and section 4.09 of the Orange County Charter. Sorry. Uh, yes, Kevin Darren. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, early in this session, we heard some of our legislators talk about negative news. And um, unfortunately, last, last month, we all were witness to the tragedy in Florida, um, which was heartbreaking. Um, but out of that tragedy, we got to see a lot of amazing things. We got to see some young people coming out and uh, talking about common sense gun control, talking about raising the minimum age. Um, I think that I would be blind and deaf to not pay attention to those concerns. Now, while I understand that this is meant to, to support our, 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 our Orange County Sheriff's Office, which I, I completely support, um, I do not believe that this is, this is something that I would be able to in good conscience support because of the very fact that the NRA has talked about arming our teachers, uh, have, talked to, have been completely against uh, banning assault rifles, um, and I simply, I just can't support this morally. And again, I was very proud to see that there was a, a young person who spoke in the audience earlier today. Again, I think that that's the kind of courage and leadership that we need to be seeing. Um, this is a conversation that we need to be having as a country, and I think in the county we could be doing more. Um, every time that we talk that this, there's, a, there's a shooting, we hear everyone talk about mental health, and yet we are reducing mental health um, funding. So again, I'm a no. I'm a definite no. Um, I would say, however, that if this, if our, if our my fellow legislators decide not to vote on this resolution, I'd be more than happy to speak with, within the community about raising belt money um, so to make sure that we can get those funds for the sheriff's office. And I'm sure that there are a lot of people in this in this community in this room that would be more than happy to give that money instead of the NRA. So again, I'm a no. thank you. Roll call. Sierra, I'm sorry. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I wanted to take a moment to uh, make me acknowledge the sheriff for the fine job in this uh, office I've been doing. I uh, had a chance to sit on the public safety committee. We did discuss this. And regardless of where you stand on this uh, NRA issue, this gun control issue, uh, these funds are going to our sheriff's office to use ammunition that's much needed in their training. I see them training all the time. I see the sheriff's office training with their the K-9 unit, their bomb squad, um, they're constantly training. And I understand, um, again, these funds are going to be used for the protection of our entire county. In favor of this, $3,600 worth of ammunition buys a lot of ammunition to train our police officers, whether it be what types of training they need to do. But, um, I'm in favor of I have to agree with you. I mean, I don't agree with everything that the NRA says, but it, it, you know, we have to qualify our, our sheriff's deputies on the range. And if we don't accept this money, we're going to have to pay for it out of county taxation. So I'm definitely for it. Yes, Legislator Holmes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I agree with Legislator Sierra as well. As a member of the Police Advisory Board, I attended a lot of meetings. Uh, the county executive called the meeting 
of the Police Advisory Board to pass its recommendations on school safety. And really, the experts on school safety in Orange County with respect to law enforcement are the members of the Orange County Sheriff's Office, with uh, particular regard to the Special Operations Group uh, and uh, Deputy Under Sheriff Tony Weed. Uh, I think everybody in law enforcement respects him and his team, and he has offered to do safety analysis for every school district in Orange County. Uh, with respect to safety, with respect to doors, with respect to uh, who's going to come to a call if you have it. And they have done tremendous work on this. Uh, if you look at the resolution, this is to use ammunition for new patrol rifles. So who's going to have the guns? The, the police officers are going to have the guns and the ammunition in this scenario. And we also, as many of you heard, have a new police initiative along with Homeland Security and the Sheriff's Office is going to have another shooting range to train Homeland Security, to train our local officers, to train federal officers who are going to be working side by side with the Sheriff's Office. That's who's going to be using this ammunition. And I, for one, will always support law enforcement in their training. Thank you. Dirty money. No problem. No, I'm sorry to tell. Well, I agree with what Legislator Hines and Legislator Sierra has said on the training of our officers. We represent the people we've heard from the people here today. I would rather see us pay for this out of our tax money and out of our budget. Legislator Fazio. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I fully support what Kevin Darian said. I don't have a problem. I just think that we've heard from the people, we represent the people, and we need to pay for this out of our out of our coffers. Thank you, Chairman. I'd just like to echo uh, Chairman Hines, <clears throat> pardon me, Chairman Hines, as Chairman of the Public Safety Committee, uh, he always assembles a very informative committee meeting, and uh, I appreciate his leadership on that. And as he mentioned, the sheriff made a, quite a presentation at the last public safety meeting, and I'm proud to say that I will always support our men and women in uniform, and I will always support our sheriff. I ask for all of us here to vote yes on this resolution. Shame, shame, shame. Please, please. Augustus Leader Amo. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm going to support this, obviously, but in light of the comments, would you pass the offering to get out of the Nelly? Yes. Adu? Yes. Amo? Yes. Nagasakis? Benton? Yes. Cheney? Edgione? Yes. Hine? Kulasek? Luhan? No. Minuta? Yes. O'Donnell? Kraskevich? Yes. Sassy? Sierra? Staganga? Yes. Sutherland? Yes. Quartel? No. Tui? Yes. Bureau? Yes. Fresh. 19 eyes, 2 no. Shame, shame. Legislative Spagione, Mujan, Benton, and Hines. Resolution authorizing the Orange County Department of Emergency Services, Police Services, to restore unused funds from the 2017 budget into the 2018 budget, pursuant to section 4.010 of the Orange County Chart. Discussion? Roll call. Yes. Kadu? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Cheney? Spagione? Hines? Pulisa, Luhan, Menuda, O'Donnell, Skevich, Sassy, Sierra, Saganga, Sutherland, Cortell, Tui, Piero, Brescia, 21 eyes. Okay, number 23. Legislators Spagione and Skevich and Sierra, an act amending the appropriate Orange County employment schedules to create program integrity officer at the Orange County Sheriff's Office pursuant to section 2.02I of the Orange County Charter. Discussion? Benelli? Yes. Padu? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Cheney? Fagione? Hines? Pulisek? Luhan? Yes. Menuda? O'Donnell? Ruskevich? Sassy? Sierra? Saganga? Sutherland? Tortell? Tui? Vero? Fresh? 21 eyes. Okay, number 24. Legislators Kulasek, Benelli, Benton, and Purdue. 
Resolution of the Orange County Legislature authorizing the acceptance of a tax litigation settlement with the United States Postal Service. Discussion. Okay. Finelli? Yes. Tadu? Yes. Amo? Yes. And Agnesakis, Benton, Sheen, Baggione, Hines, Pulisek, Duhan, Venuda, O'Donnell, Miskevich, Sassi, Sierra, Saganga, Sutherland, Tortell, Tui, Bureau, Fresh, 21 eyes. Legislators Tortell and Menuda. Resolution making findings and setting a date for a public hearing with respect to funding for a flood control maintenance project for Quaker Creek, Town of Goshen, New York, pursuant to New York State County Law, Section 223. Public hearing would be Monday, April 16, 2018, at 5.15 p.m. Finelli? Yes. Sadu? Yes. Amo? Yes. And Agnostakis? Benton, Cheney, Bajion, Hines, Pulisek, Luhan, Menuda, O'Donnell, Eskevich, Bassi, Sierra, Saganga, Sutherland, Tartell, Tui, Bureau, Brescia, 21 eyes. Legislators Luhan and Tartell, resolution authorizing the County of Orange to enter into an amendment to existing corporation agreements with cooperating communities listed on Schedule A attached here to, for the purpose of enabling the County of Orange to receive an emergency solutions grant and authorizing the County Executive to sign the amendment to corporation agreement shown on Schedule B attached here to. Discussion? Minority, Dr. Booth added, Benelli added, Fulisek added, Stiganga, Tui, Local. Finelli? Yes. Tadu? Yes. Amo? Yes. Magnuskakis? Benton? Cheney? Fagione? Hines? Gorsuch? Luhan? Menuda? O'Donnell? Miskevich? Sassi? Sierra? Stiganga? Sutherland? Tartell? Tui? Vero? Brexit? 21 eyes. Number 27. Legislator O'Donnell, resolution of the Orange County Legislature urging the Governor of the State of New York and the New York State Department of Education to release funds to Orange County school districts under the Smart School Bond Act. Discussion. Uh, yes. All Republicans added. All Dems and Independents. Okay. Uh, roll call. Yes. I'm sorry. I'm I just want to say that um, these monies are being hand are hamstring. School Brain. Newburgh City School District alone, which serves Newburgh, City of Newburgh, and Town of Windsor. $5.8 million being held up every single day. We hold up money from the school. We hold money up from the children being educated to the best possible standard. So I am fully supporting this plan. Thank you. Yes, Legislator O'Donnell. Thank you, Chairman. Just to uh, educate the public that are here today. This came up uh, Monday. We had a, a school safety meeting with uh, Senator Locke and Senator DeFrancesco, about six or seven or eight school superintendents. And the school superintendents were the one that brought this to our attention, that uh, since the Bond Act was passed in 2014, which the entire state voted on, uh, $2 billion, uh, none of that money has come back down to the school districts to date. So I'll give you two quick examples. Uh, the Pine Bush School District is, is scheduled to receive $5,050,000 in change, of which $790,000 is for school safety upgrades. The Greenwood Lake School District is scheduled to get $646,000 in change all of which is scheduled for school safety. Each school district is getting X amount of dollars for school safety upgrades. So this resolution is to uh, put some pressure on Albany, send a message to the governor and the uh, state education department to uh, release that money and stop the bureaucratic red tape. Thank you. Thank you. Roll call. Yes. 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 
Nagasaki, Benton T, Bedjulon, Hines, Joseph, Yuhan, Menuda, O'Donnell, the Skedit, Patsy, Sierra, Sedanza, Sutherland, Cartel, Chewy, Beer, on Breck, 21 eyes, Mr. Chairman, and a desk. Okay, we've still got a few speakers for after session. Mary Lou Dietrich, CPV. power over our local government. CPV is a clear example where money talked and the good of we the people was forgotten. And thoroughly searching your website, the Orange County website, I finally found a 21-page Indian Point emergency guide, including evacuations, schools, buses, shelters, pets, etc. It was comprehensive. I had to search to find that. So that should have been in the front the website so that Dr. Kirby ever needed. But there's no plan for CPV. What is being done to monitor the admissions from CPV and when will we the people be given an emergency plan of action for when the accident occurs at the CPV? All our health is at risk. You can now see it, you can smell it, and I'm breathing it. Every time they blow that smoke, who is looking out for me? I contacted the New York State Citizens Fairness Corporation. No plan. No plan. That's pretty sad. So my question to you is, where is the plan? How do we get access to what, is supposed to, what we're supposed to do? Who is looking out for me and we the people? Thank you. Obi Figueroa. Um, please push the button on me. First thing, I think we cost us about two cents for the person that pays taxes in the county that needs to pay for the boards or something. Wouldn't be a whole lot of money. I'd be more than willing to get five hundred dollars a day. But this way the chair's off isn't even goals that are coming in. I don't think it's on. We can't hear you. You can't hear me? How's that better? All right. I would like to start by saying as a resident and business owner in Orange County, being here today is not in my best interest. There's a widely studied phenomenon called the bystander effect. It's when people see someone in distress and look on the thought from that taking action and someone else takes the initiative. There are many reasons behind it, but fear is primarily the driver. Our local state, our local county, state, and federal government has facilitated and stood by silently as the CPD power plant and way, way the nearest completion, while the residents of Orange County and the surrounding counties are being thrown under the bus. We have a power plant that was initially approved with permits that were bought in Albany with bribe money. This is not an accusation, but based on fact and the documented and evidence in a trial going on in New York City. A plant that will supply no electric to the residents of Orange County directly, but the electric will go to the grid and be sold. A plant that is not needed since New York uses less than half the power generated in the state, and the electric generated in this plant will only benefit the facility operator. Plan specifically built to burn cracked gas that will increase the emissions in New York State by 10%. This is the plant's operator's estimate, which by most accounts is severely understated. Dumping emissions into our county air that already suffers poor air quality from emissions from power plants in Pennsylvania and Ohio. A plant that will operate in New York, that by the way is a ban on fracking, and will allow another state to do its dirty work, supply the plant with gas they frack at the expense of their own environment and residents' health. The gas will flow through a pipeline in Orange County while contaminating the environment and sacrificing the health of residents in the proximity to the pipeline and gas compressor station way, way on them. The plant has storage for 15,000 gallons, 19% ammonium concentrate, 1% under the minimum required to provide an emergency plan. The local towns in Orange County do not have an emergency plan to specifically deal with the potential vehicle hazard. The EPA's own studies catastrophic failure of ammonia storage facilities of similar size to a toxic endpoint radius of between 14 and 24 miles. So 19% or 21% will not make a difference. It will be ugly. Again, it is not in my best interest as a business owner to stand here today. It's my moral obligation. I know we have a lot of good people up here, so stop being bystanders. 
who is morally and ethically right for your constituents, to step forward and publicly condemn the CPD power plant. Publicly push Newhouse to condemn it, push Newhouse to push Cuomo to condemn it, and come wherever your constituents are rallying and help us condemn this power plant. Stop being bystanders and be the leaders that you took your oath to be. Thank you. George Watson, the Guardian CTV. Good afternoon. Thank you. 18 months ago, I, I found out what the acronym CTV stands for. Since then, I have made it my mission to become informed on all aspects of this project. What I have found out is that this power plant is found way beyond it is an unnecessary cancer-causing atrocity that is mired in controversy in every form. An environmental nightmare standing in a fishbowl of a valley waiting to be used as a soft target for terrorism. Situated between a state road and an interstate highway with no means of evacuation or emergency disaster plans found. It started with a door opening by the Orange County Partnership, followed by approvals from our county executive local municipality seeking monetary benefits, the Orange County Chamber of Commerce, the OCIBA, the Orange County Legislature, Senator Bonasac, Governor Andrew Cuomo, and a willing and complacent DEC. I have spent hours of my time sending emails and speaking with elected officials, including Mayor of Goshen, Colorado, Assemblyman James Scoopis, Mayor Joe DiStefano of Middletown, County Executive Steve Newhouse, and Mr. James O'Donnell. Not to mention the countless phone calls to the governor's office pleading for a response to the public outcry for answers on why this monstrosity was allowed to be constructed. My conclusion is this, profits before people. As we speak, a trial in Manhattan courtroom decides the fate of the corrupt. This was tainted from the beginning. I stand here today to admit guilt. My complacency and lack of awareness, along with the trust that I have placed in my elected officials, has led my family and neighbors to this point. When I have to attend a public health forum on the dangers of living near a fracked gas power plant, I have failed. And so have all of you, every single one of you. As elected officials, you took an oath to protect your constituents and act in their best interest. You have a moral obligation to look out for the health well-being of the ones you serve. Instead, you have served yourselves. So now, I stand here to tell you that I will forgive you, even if you have abstained from voicing your opposition to this power plant. I will forgive you if you stand up and publicly denounce the CPD power plant on the grounds that it will destroy this county in every way. If you decide to stay silent on this matter, you have my word that every man, woman, and child in this county will hear that your political advancement and your war chests are more important than our health. Thank you. Scott Martins, Public Health and Safety and Environmental Profession. Thank you all very much uh, for letting me speak to you once again. I have um, almost every single month over the last year, and I will continue to do so until this plant is shut down. Um, I, you know, I, I first just have to say, you know, the, the NRA um, uh, donation uh, bribe or whatever you want to call it, it is, it's just another sad example from this legislator nature um, that you are completely and utterly out of touch with the people that you were meant to represent. I mean, in the, in the, in the face of what just happened and what keeps happening over and over again, all you have, this is only $3,000. What is $3,000 in, in, in a budget for Orange County? And, and only two legislators have the guts to stand up and, and for their constituents? I mean, that is just, it's just another example, yet again. I've come here month after month after month. I keep seeing it over and over again. Thank you guys so much for standing up. For this evening. So um, I know I don't have a lot of time. So I want to give you guys an update on the on the CPV and the, the illegal pipeline uh, that this legislature opposed through a, a resolution last year with an almost unanimous vote. Uh, it's chugging along at a rapid rate uh, through the muck and the flooded fields of the Minnesink. 
It's tearing up land and destroying wildlife habitat. And it, as it's making its way um, uh, on the almost eight mile alignment, putting residences, wet water wells in danger of contamination. Presently, they're working on at least half a different, half a dozen different sites on that pipeline route. And right now, they're horizontally drilling through the old Weiweyanda town dump, the disposal site of Balcam for years and years, which is a super fun site. They are drilling underground. You cannot see where they're drilling through this, through this place that has full of toxins, completely undisclosed. As you know, the power plant is testing on diesel fuel now, um, which it is not permitted to do specifically, sickening hundreds of people and waking up an entire community to the harsh reality that this unnecessary, corrupt, frack gas power plant will potentially be a part of our daily lives. It's unacceptable. Protect Orange County held a public forum on Tuesday night, and the room was packed. It was standing room only. There were people out in the lobby waiting to get in. Over 150 people came, and, and, and everybody is very, very, very upset. I'm sure all of you have gotten a lot of phone calls about this. And one thing is for sure that we got out of that meeting, those who were involved in the siting and approval of this project will be held accountable for making us sick politically and legally. I'm telling you this. Um, there's a federal corruption trial, which we talked about, um, involving CPV, and it's illustrated clearly that this project was built on bribes, and therefore it's delegitimized the entire um, uh, permitting process. This is an out for all of you who have bought into their false advertisement in the name of progress. And I urge you to stand up, like these two gentlemen said, and, 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 and uh, oppose CPV with us. Uh, CPV's admitted that they are not monitoring the air during the startup phase. Can I just have one more minute, please, sir? One more minute, 15 seconds. Okay, conclude. Um, I just want to read, read a, a couple of quick quotes um, that are really, really important here. First, from Newhouse, County Executive. As I called for over a year ago, we need our state and federal officials to suspend the permits pending a true and complete environmental review untainted by corruption. And Te Theodore Roosevelt, here is your country. Cherish these natural wonders. Thank you, Scott. Cherish the natural Thank you, resources. Scott. Cherish Thank you, Scott. You used your time with the, on the NRA issue in the beginning. You probably should have used it for CPV. Thank you. Listen, we have a three minute time limit. You're the only one that's gone beyond the three minutes. You know the rules. Marianne McDonough knows the rules. I'm sorry, John. The people will let me finish. Listen, I'm gonna have I'm gonna have to ask you to leave. The people do not Scott, you're gonna have to leave if you don't sit down. It wasn't taking ten minutes. I want to minutes. You know the rules, it's three minutes. Be respectful for all the other speakers. Don't start listen, I'm gonna have both of you escorted out if you don't stop. Greg, you too. You don't have to be scared of me. But those officers are gonna escort you out. One more remark like that. We have a three minute time frame we've had for 20 years. So I'm not going to get into a back and forth with you guys. Just stop, please. Next speaker, Madeline Shaw. May I yield? No, you may not. Try to be fair to everybody and, and it's getting abused. I must say, I used to love to come to these meetings because everything was so clear and I could understand it. I, I sat through, we deserve our money back on this sound system. Anyway, my colleagues have already... Madeline, let's not, we have a three minute time frame, let's not clear. I'm doing it. Okay. I'm doing it. I was at that meeting the other night and my colleagues have eloquently and clearly and forcefully uh, elucidated the problems with uh, CPV. That's not all of them. I will take it down to one mother's comment. When there was a doctor at that meeting and someone asked, when is it safe for the kids to go out to play? You know, so, well, when the brown smoke is there, it's not safe for the kids to go to play. What's going to come through is smoke that is not too detectable. And she said, the mother said, how will I know if it's safe for my child? And that's what we're dealing with. We're dealing with health, we're dealing with safety. We do not need this plant. It is based on lies. They overstep everything that they are semi-allowed to do. 
We have this gift from our ancestors, and it is our gift to our children and the people to come. We should preserve it. We should keep it beautiful. We should keep it safe, and more than safe, healthy for all of generations to come. This is this is abominable. And what we can do is, if you support our state agency, our DC agency, which forbade the building of the pipeline, a few days later, FERC, the federal agency, said, yes, you can build it. So we're, we are being overrun by a federal agency. Call the governor, call your people that, that are representing you, and tell them to back up our state. We have state rights in this, in this area. We should not be dictated to by FERC, which passes every damn pipeline in the pipeline. So uh, I am finished. I can't read that's writing. I'm sorry, Scott. And I, I beg of you to do what's right. You were elected to support your constituents, to support the health and safety of our area, of our beautiful Hudson Valley. And by the way, the, the uh, particulate matter is so fine in what is going to be left after that stuff burns. It's going to come down on the black dirt. It's going to come down on our children's skin. It's going to come down to our lungs. And we will not even know it's there until we get sick. So please, think about it. Swallow whatever pride there is involved in this. Swallow whatever commitments politically. And do what's right, for God's sake. You wake up in the morning feeling a whole lot, lot better. Okay, final speaker, Deborah Copal, regarding her legal petition filed with the Department of Public Service to halt the rollout of smart meters in London, Colton County. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I was last before this body in 2011 uh, when the legislature passed the resolution 19 to 2 that was given to President Obama uh, and the New York State Health Department asking them to look into health effects of smart meters and other microwave emitting equipment. Today, I'm here to ask for your support for a 20-page legal filing called a petition for rehearing that I filed with the Department of Public Service to halt the rollout of smart meters in R.M. Sullivan and the remainder of Rockland. I filed the petition in December. It was listed in the state register on January 31st, and comments, uh, hopefully in support, are open until April 1st. Uh, to date, the petition has the support of Protect Orange County, NYSEMA, the New York State Utility Meter Association, SSM Woodstock, and Grassroots Environmental Education. The legal concept behind my petition is that the law approving the rollout was violated uh, because when certain charges and rates uh, are in excess of 300,000 or 2.5 percent, they have to be approved in a rate hearing that automatically triggers a public hearing. There was no public hearing. Uh, and ONR argues that these charges were pre-approved in 2015. These are in fact new charges. Uh, they have hidden over billing because of the defective current transformers in the meters. There are charges from opt-out fees, and I believe that the meter also charges the consumer to actually, when they're doing the billing for the metering. Uh, these were not, would not have gone into effect absent ONR's petition pre being approved. There are other hidden charges like fire and explosion risks, violations of the FHA and ADA due to high pulse microwave radiation. They are not underwriter laboratory certified. They don't have surge arresters, they're not properly grounded. They fail the FCC listen test, which has to do with conducted emissions, which put blind pollution in people's houses and the hospitals. They interfere with electronics. Uh, and the DPS has allowed ONR to amortize these costs to be collected at a future public hearing when it's already a fait accompli, and that's how they circumvented the public hearing. Uh, Legislator Kulisek asked me one of the $64,000 questions, which is, why is Con Ed's lawyer defending ONR in this proceeding? ONR got improper approval for use of these meters with the current transformer by claiming quote-unquote synergies with Conhead's purchase in Westchester. These purchases need to be vetted in Orange County at a rate hearing by ONR, not grandfathered in uh, by a separate proceeding in Westchester. This is a violation of the law. Two weeks after Conhead's answer, in which they claimed my claims were quote-unquote speculative, guess what? The patch in Mohud reported smart meter fires on people's houses in Rockland County. And lo and behold, Owen Hart just announced a rate hearing so they can now pay for things and get a rubber stamp approval for something that was already approved circumventing the public hearing. You don't have to be pro or anti wireless technology to be pro transparency, but certainly there are many issues uh, to be vetted based on what's happened in other states. These meters are banned in Indiana. 
Uh, there are opt-outs with analog meters in California, Maine, Vermont, Texas. The American Academy of Environmental Medicine calls for a moratorium on this dangerous technology, as does Dr. David Carpenter at SUNY Albany, who is the nation's expert on the health effects of smart meters. Uh, and there are privacy violations, which are documented in the movie Take Back the Power, uh, which features uh, the former head of the CIA, James Woolsey. I put together a two-page packet for everyone. There's a fact sheet on page one. I have uh, a link to the movie Take Back Your Power with the um, password for elected officials. And on page two, I have a sample letter uh, that I would request people to consider to upload to the matter management site in support of my petition. And uh, this is a grace period. I'm available to meet with committees uh, to discuss this further. I have reached out to Mr. Hines. Uh, Mr. Nagasaki, I'd love to come. Thank you for having me back. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Can I pass these out? Yes, uh, Deborah, please uh, give it to the deputy clerk. Thank you. Uh, all in favor of the motion to adjourn? Aye. Adjourn.